Hey, everybody. I'm Monty Mott, and I want to thank you for investing in the Shareholders Podcast. It's a blessing to be here once again, guys. It always is. And I really always want to thank you for the support. Just for, I'm getting such great feedback on this season of the show. And it's blessing me, and I hope it's blessing you guys because I'm learning. I wouldn't, I had no plans on starting this or doing the show myself, hosting it, but I'm glad I did because. I've made some great connections. My guest today, I could have him, of course, and probably will have him on my music show. He's been on once before way back, but uh, I wanted to talk business with him today. So I wanted to bring him on the Shareholders Podcast. He is known as the Gospel Guru, Mr. Devante Arbe. How you doing, bro? Man, I'm well, man. Excited to be a part. Thanks for having me, bro. Hey, man. And thank you for being on, man. It's a, it's a blessing. And um, he, if you guys don't know, very quick, um, when I started my old show a couple of years back, he gave me some guests, man. He was really uh, kind to me, um, came through for the Stellars, you know, uh, got me some hookups with a couple of things he hosted and I was able to, you know, score some content. So I was always appreciative and uh, he was more than nice to come amidst his busy schedule. And we about to get into that busy schedule and all that he does. But basically, if you don't know, he is what we consider an insider in the music business and um, with a heavy slant in the gospel industry as well. And guys, I check his page every Friday because I'm like, so who's got the new music out? You know, who's, who's coming out with this and that? And, you know, because my iTunes only gives me so many people and he, he gets right. a lot more uh, newer artists and maybe people you haven't heard of. And, and it's, it's, it's great uh, for me, a person that loves music. So let me ask you, man, just from the beginning, the origins, how, how did you get your start? And is this something that you always wanted to do? Man, you know what? I never thought I would be, you know, doing um, blogging as, as, you know, as one of my jobs, artist management. I never saw any of that. Honestly, I just love gospel music. Um, it's the music I grew up on. Um, love the Clark Sisters, the Winans, Dietrich Gatton, Jay Moss, <clears throat> Fred Hammond, John P. Key, you know, Vanessa Bell Armstrong, Daryl Coley, yeah. the list goes on and on. So, you know what? It, I just lived and breathed music. And so I got my start by, um, I would always just, uh, before I, I did what I do professionally, I would always post and tell people about um, the latest releases and music. I would keep people up to date on, you know, when people's albums were dropping, you know, all that stuff. I just did that just because, you know, I love music. I love telling people about good music. And it was just something I was passionate about. And uh, while doing that, I caught the attention of some people at some record labels. And this was back in the day, you know, maybe 10 years of, or more ago, where the record labels used to do street teams. And so um, the marketing um, execs at the labels, at two labels at the time, it was Verity Music Group, as well as Ty Scott, mm -hmm. as well as EMI Gospel. I came, I became really, I guess, close friends with um, those marketing execs at those labels, and they wanted me a part of their street teams because they saw I had a, a natural knack for just promoting um, gospel music. So that's how I got my, you know, feet wet into the industry, so to speak. Okay, so that there, man, it's, it's so much just to unfold in that. And I love how it's always been in you, basically, you know, just right. the music and the love of it. And to then take it in a level that, you know, not that people weren't always promoting it, but it seems like in the last maybe decade or, in a, or so, just with social media and things, right. you're able to reach so more many people more fast. You know, you brought up street teams. I don't even know if young, young people know what that really is anymore. Like, I don't exist anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That was that 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 phrase you don't hear as much anymore, but uh, right. that was part of that grind. So yeah. you've been able to now work with um, artists on a lot of different levels. Right. So I know you kind of wear a lot of different hats, but can you kind of break down some of the things you do in terms of how it benefits the your mainstream artists? You put on a great event, um, man, at, well, God, we haven't had Stellars, we didn't have it last year, but the last time I right. went, it was probably two or three years ago, and you mm -hmm. put on a great event. So how do you work with 
kind of your bigger artists, but then also how do you benefit the independent guys or the young the young ones coming up? Just kind of explain all that you're able to do. Right. And I guess, you know, for those uh, that don't know, maybe the difference between the independent artist versus someone that's with the major label. Independent artist typically owns 100% of their masters. They retain ownership of their music. Um, that also means that they're footing the bill for everything. That's kind of, you know, the the lane for the independent artist and the so, uh, artist that's signed to a record label. They've, you know, given up some of the creative control, so to speak, but they get to tap into those resources that the label offers. So. Yeah. Um, I've worked with artists on both ends of the spectrum. And so I would say those artists that maybe don't have the big machine behind them, um, I always encourage them to u- utilize social media. Honestly, that's, you know, one of the biggest tools out there um, today. We see so many artists, not just in gospel, who get discovered from social media, you know, whether it's reality TV stars or people going viral. It's such a, you know, if you use it correctly, it's a, it's such a powerful tool. And so yeah. I always, you know, encourage people to learn all that you can about how to make social media work for you. That's uh, part of the, the beauty of, you know, everybody having a cell phone now is that social media can be right in their hand right. and that artists can reach out. So it's funny when you kind of hit on that with independent artists. I'm glad you kind of gave the difference there. I had uh, just recently Jeffrey Golden was on and he talked about the first album he did uh, was with For Your Soul and uh, through Kirk. Right. And then the second album he did independent mm-hmm. and how it took so much longer, you know, just right. with money and things like that. And for him, he, you know, winning Sunday Best gave him a name. You know, we all know, oh yeah, Jeffrey Golden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure he probably had people like, hey doc, when the album coming out, but doing it right. independent, yeah. I don't think people understand how much goes into what a label sure. does. So sure. I'm, I'm gonna kind of put you on the spot, man. If you if you found somebody and was an amazing talent, like you know, you maybe discovered somebody, seen on YouTube, whatever. Mm-hmm. In your honest opinion, where would you kind of direct them? Would you say, listen, you know, they haven't done anything yet. I'm just giving you the scenario. Great singer, you know, great talent, great group. Would you direct them the independent way? Or would you try to tie them in with a label for their first project? You know what? We would really have to have a, a honest conversation to see what that artist really wants to achieve mm. and to be honest about where they are financially yeah. or if they have investors, you know, that, that type of thing. Or to even, you know, some people have money but don't know where to spend it or who, you know, who to give it to because, you know, what good is having, you know, $50,000 if I don't know what to do with it? So, yeah. you know, some people need different guidance, if that makes sense. So it's, it's really all about having that conversation just to see what that artist really needs uh, because they might be resourceful and, and have the funds to um, go the independent route. And they might just need, you know, di- direction in, in terms of getting a, a radio promoter or a publicist or finding a distributor, you know, that type of thing. So it's really, I guess, you know, assessing where that artist is in their career to, you know, really determine what they need. That's a great, that's a great answer, man. And for those of you, if you're watching this and, you got some talent and you don't really know. He's kind of giving you some good, some good little nuggets there because I mean, it t- it, it takes some money. Right. And I don't care how talented you are. You know, I, I know we just see the finished product, but we don't know all the people behind the person to help them and things exactly. like that. Nobody's doing it by themselves. I'm going to ask you one more question. Then we're going to take a quick break. How important, because we just talked about with social media, how important is branding for these artists. And I mean that in terms of, you know, like I said, I brought up Jeffrey and he was kind of tied with the Sunday Best brand. So it kind of mm-hmm. gave him a little bit of a push that maybe somebody else might not have. But for an artist that wants to be, you know, have that that, that impact, is, is branding, is that even a big thing for gospel artists? For sure. You know what? Myself, mm-hmm. you know, I always say we see things before we hear them. Mm-hmm. If I see an album cover and it's not, you know, aesthetically, you know, pleasing in some way, it makes me not want to listen to it, just being honest. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, I'm a visual person. Um, so I always say, you know, just make sure that in terms of pre- presentation, you know, that, you know, you're giving, you're putting your best foot forward you know, in every aspect and branding is a part of that. Just because, you know, even performers before someone hears, you know, what you have to offer talent wise, they're going to see you. And so a lot of people, you know, pass judgment just on, you know, your appearance Yeah. before they even, you know, hear you, or they might just, you know, turn a deaf ear to you without even giving you opportunity to minister to them or, or perform, you know? So yeah. I would say branding is, you know, super important. 
no matter what the job. That's well said, man. Um, Because I, I, again, I keep going back to it, but I remember the event that you had at the Stellars. I was watching you, man, and you were making sure, you know, every T was crossed, every I, this looks nice. And it, it looked amazing. I couldn't believe, I think we were at the, um, Lord, let me get to Hard Rock, I think, I can't remember, but. Uh, oh, yeah, um, yeah, okay. That one. For sure, and yeah. I just was blown away, and it, it really did, walking in there, it, it made you feel a certain <laughs> way, like, wow, this is, this here is an event, you know what I'm saying? And it's just, it's just some of those things that maybe an artist that just, all I know how to do is sing that, okay, well then that's why you need to talk to somebody uh, right. like Guru or somebody else like that to kind of polish, you know, you got the gift, but like you said, if you, if you coming up in some old beat up clothes or your album ain't, you know, it's not produced right, it'll turn people off, even though you have a gift in a ministry. So exactly. we're going to take a quick break, man. I am loving this conversation with my man. Uh, hear from our, our little sponsor real quick, and it will be right back. Today's episode of Our Favorite Things is brought to you by Mr. Chris M. Webb. He is running for city council in the city of Whitehall, Ohio, but more importantly, he is a political consultant, and he is here to help you with any questions or concerns you might have in these strange, strange political times. You can check him out at Chris M. Webb on Instagram or at the same handle, Chris M. Webb on Twitter. He's also at Chris Webb on Facebook. If you're a young person or an older person and you have questions and concerns about what's going on, or if you're thinking about running for office, he is a great person to talk to. He's offering his services for free. As of right now, <laughs> the price might go up. We don't know. But for right now, you can take advantage of his information. He is very knowledgeable and he's willing to help. Doesn't matter what side you're on or anything like that. Check him out if you have any questions on what it takes to run for office, what it takes to get a campaign going. You can check him out. Or if you just have questions and want to holler at him, Chris M. Webb. He is my cousin. I vouch for him. All right. Check him out. Guys, we're back talking with the gospel guru, the great gospel guru, 3G, if you will. And uh, <laughs> I'm enjoying, man, we've been already getting into some things. Hopefully it's helping somebody, man, especially I'm really going to try to push this for my young artists out there, my uh, people that are great and, and and just need that little bit of extra. Hope you're getting something from this. So I want to now switch, man, uh, to some of the things that happened in the world. I mean, this pandemic has touched everybody. And um, I've talked with some musicians and some artists, and of course, especially for local musicians, closing down of venues and not being able to, to tour and the to travel is, is hurt, of course. So I guess my question to you is, do you feel like we'll get back to where we were? Or do you feel like things, not that we're going to, you know, stay locked in the houses and things like that, but do you ever think we're going to kind of get that heyday where we were really just out doing whatever, whatever, or do you think everything's going to have that kind of, that kind of cautious push to it? We won't have as much. You know, honestly, I think we're slowly but surely getting back to some, some sense of normalcy. Mm -hmm. I know people are ready for concerts. We see um, clips from social media all the time people are gathering regardless of what the cdc says you know at venues because people you know we love to be around each other we love to be at our social events so i do feel like in some regard we will get back to that <clears throat> however i do think also we've seen a shift in terms of how shows are produced we've seen a shift in how the talk show format how you know they've opened up a space where you can now have talent virtually you know yeah, yeah. whereas you know <clears throat> prior to last year you know if you couldn't physically be there they you probably wouldn't get booked on the real or um, the today show or good morning america but now you see all these artists with these opportunities to you know promote whatever they have to promote you know and they're sitting in their sitting in their living room so yeah. um, we're seeing you know something we're seeing everyone being forced to embrace the digital space and you know i, I must say i love it yeah it's um just you know us when people watch this they'll see us on zoom ain't nobody gonna think nothing of it you know what i'm saying i mean right. I, it's the new normal it's the normal you know what i mean and a year, I got an expensive camera sitting right over there, but I don't, you know, I'm using this and it's, it is what it is. So now specifically, I want to ask you kind of that question dealing with churches and, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of Christian artists would travel to churches. And we, like you said, depending on where you live, your county or your state's um, jurisdiction, some churches are open, some of them are passing. Right. So I know just with church musicians and I know, you know, with church, with singers and stuff like that, they're also hoping things open up. What have you kind of heard in terms of the, the, the church world and, and, and people being able to, singers being able to sing and things like that, revivals? Have you heard anything kind of positive for that? I, the only thing I can say is I know everybody's ready to get back to that space because, you know, at the end of the day, you know, people love to have an experience. And it's something about that in-person experience. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, virtual is cool. 
but it's nothing like a, you know, that in-person experience you get at a concert or at a revival, even at church services, you know, yeah. it's nothing like, nothing can replace that in-person connection that you, you get, you know? So hope, hopefully we can get back to it soon. I really hope so, man. And that's a great, that's a great point. Um, I remember, <laughs> I remember seeing Tina Campbell at a, um, some event and it was after Stellar's and, uh, she sang, she sang a song, uh, Destination and mm -hmm. hearing her live, it just, she was so anointed and she, I Thank mean, you. she blew me away. And of course we know they could blow and, and that ain't nothing I ain't saying, but to see her live and to really be in a ministry mode, like you said, it, as much as we love to just make do with what we're doing and YouTube and all that, it's just not the same. So I, right. I truly hope so as well. So next question for you man i'm sure you get asked this a lot hey doc i, I want to do what you're doing man or how did you get you know how can i do like you and i'm sure young people i mean it, it looks i'm sure it's a lot of work they don't know about but it looks cool a lot of work. man you <laughs> You hooking up with all the artists, you know, all that. What would you advise a, a young person or anybody that's maybe wanting to be an, an insider, if you will? How how would you advise them going about that? I would advise, you know, anyone um, aspiring to be in the field of blogging or maybe the field of management um, to read, read up on it. The business of blogging, the business of music. There are, you know, great tools out there, great resources out there that can really um, put you on game, help you out a lot. That's what I do. When I after, after I started Gospel Guru, realized that I could monetize Gospel Guru. I started reading up on that. Mm -hmm. um, one of my or someone I really looked up to and patterned Gospel Guru after um, Angel Laws. She used to she shut down her website um, a few years back, but it was called ConcreteLoop.com, and she put out a book, um, basically you know detailing. You might get it on Amazon. Um, detailing how you can monetize your blog. That yeah. book was such a great tool for me because I was, it just, it opened me up to a new world. I had no idea you could monetize, you know, a blog. I'm just doing something I love. And I'm like, wait, I can make money doing this? Yeah. So, you know, knowledge is power. See, so now I know y'all was hoping he's going to tell you some trick, some little, <laughs> oh, no, no, no. There you go. Read, you know, put in the oh. hard work and right. you know, God, God will bless. But I, I love that. It's no shortcuts, y'all. And they know, you know what I'm saying? He's telling you exactly what he did and that's what it was. So yeah. winding up, man, with, with, with Guru. So where, where, where do you really want to go with this, man? I mean, you've been very successful and you've been able to be a part of some some great things. Are you are you going to continue this? Do you have maybe some, some bigger plans? Maybe not a five-year plan, but just, man, some other things or some other the interest or are you going to kind of keep going rolling with this well man um i love gospel guru gospel guru has afforded me many um opportunities over you know it's been a decade now that i've been doing gospel guru in particular and you know i've been you know really blessed and it's opened up so many doors for me so um i do con continue i do see myself continuing to do gospel guru in some facet um i am looking to well not looking to i am launching a podcast um very soon for gospel guru so stay tuned and look out for that and also i'm still doing my um, management piece brand manager for anthony brown and group therapy and artist manager for christina bell so wearing those hats as well and also um i'm stepping into film and television a little bit on the produce on the producing side so right. that's something else you can kind of uh, look forward to that's a uh an industry i've been trying to you know i've been knocking on that door for um a few a few um a few years now, about 10 years, honestly. And so you can just kind of stay tuned for that. Hopefully we, you know, have some announcements soon concerning that. And uh, man, I'm just, you know, excited about, you know, what the future holds. Okay, man, I, I got to ask you one. I was going to be my last one more question. Okay. Quick. So I forgot. Yeah, you do. You're in management with Christina Bell. And mm -hmm. for those who don't know, if you don't know Christina, she's of course part of the group with uh, Zeal. And mm -hmm. she was in the Clark Sisters movie, y'all. Right. What, did you glean anything from that experience, man? Just real quick. Man. I mean, that was amazing. It was so well done. Right. I loved it. I'm going to talk, talk about it on another show at some point. Did you glean, you know, working in that kind of industry? Did you did you glean anything that you kept with you? Oh, for sure. For sure. You know what? Um, that opportunity itself, I was able to learn so much, you know, myself and my team, just because the film world is something totally different from the music side. Things are done to totally different. Contracts look a little different. You know, the, the language is a little different. So um, it was definitely a learning experience just on the business side of things. And it was exciting though. You know, it, it was very thrilling just, you know, looking into the scope of a, a different world than what you're used to, you know, been doing things on the music side for, you know, a number of years and um, just being exposed to the, the world of film and network television was, you know, very interesting, learned a lot. Definitely, you know, 
I, I picked up some valuable gems that, you know, I can cherish for the, the rest of my, you know, professional career. So for awesome. sure, it's very, very surreal, man. Very surreal. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure it was, man, because that was that was a great project. Some amazing sure. talent that worked on that as well. So, uh, man, thank you for the time, bro. Oh, oh okay. real quick, please. I mean, you've mentioned it, but let them know where they can find you. If they know nobody know, they wouldn't pay attention. <laughs> Go ahead. Yes, sir. Plug. You can find me at the gospel guru. Dot com. You know, all my social media handles are right there at thegospelguru.com. If you don't want to go there, you can find me on Instagram, Facebook at Gospel Guru. And listen, check him out, you guys. Like I said, I check every Friday. I hit him up just to see. Thanks, bro. He always, got, he always be having the scoops and stuff. He always knows what's coming out. I love listening to new music. Bro, thank you, man. Praying for your success and all your endeavors, you, man. Bro. Great to talk to you again, man. Have a great day and be blessed. Awesome. Thanks, man.